Okay, so welcome again everyone to Wireless Field Day 7 at Airtight. Uh, my name is Heman Chaskar. I am the VP for technology here. And I have actually a short session on 11 AC VIPS update, which now has been curtailed to a mini session. So I have a demo here, <laughs> but I'm going to hit high points and you know, you have to trust me on some of the demo, demo things which I'm <laughs> planning to say. Uh, so uh, around the time you were here for Wireless Field Day 6, uh, we launched 11 AC access point platform called C75. And what we have done now is ported full feature airtight whips on this uh, C75 platform, right? Uh, why is it important to have 11 AC whips? Because 11N radio does not have full visibility into 11 AC connections. And the reason for that is 11 AC and 11N packet formats differ in their preamble part. So the 11N radio cannot decode it and we don't see those packets from an 11 n radio. So if you are trying to detect and prevent threats that are pure 11 AC, like let's say 11 AC pineapple comes out, hope it's not already out, Jake, Jake may know, but <laughs> and it's trying to exploit your enterprise 11 AC client, then that connection needs to be detected by 11 AC radio, right? So it's important. And in addition to that, C75 is also three stream radio, okay? So it's able to see the packets, which are one stream, two stream, and three stream data rate. So it's kind of best of the both worlds. So now what you can do is actually set up uh, C75 access point, either as a pure access point, or as an access point with background scanning, which is very useful uh, when your security needs are not that high, or it can be set up as a full dedicated sensor either on airtight APs or on any other APs, like a standard overlay uh, architecture, right? So uh, really, I do want to show uh, these three configurations here. So I have kind of uh, connected few C75s to this server. And as we can see, for example, this guy is in a pure AP mode. Hopefully, the mouse over shows up there. OK, it's AP or it's AP in background scanning. Uh, and it, this is a full WIPS. Okay, so we are able to have all those configurations on C75 now. Now, uh, the WIPS experience with this 11 AC is just as good as what it was before. Okay, so you install it, and what it's going to do is auto classify your devices, right, that's, that are seen around into these categories. So if you go to APs, it's going to identify your authorized APs automatically. These are your managed APs. And all the other APs that are seen around, right, that are not connected to your network, they are external and they are positively identified as blue in our terminology. And of course, the unmanaged devices that are connected to your network are rogue in our terminology. And all this is done without the need for configuring or maintaining any signatures, any auto classification rules, or without having to pull any cam tables from the switches. That's the beauty of this, right? And once uh, a kind of this auto classification is in place, uh, you can then safely enforce this automated security policy where you are blocking the red paths and you are not disturbing the blue paths because they are legitimate neighbors, right? And this, this is kind of the winner security policy that you can get when your auto classification is correct. So the point is, it's just, just as good experience as it was with earlier WIPs. Now, good stuff, we have, yes, uh, we have three stream, we have 11 AC, but there is more to get kick out of it. Now, why so? Because <clears throat> some of you might know that Atheros actually changed the driver behavior from 11N to 11 AC. And the one important aspect that affect WIPs, affects WIPs is the monitor mode, right? Monitor mode is where you are uh, scanning all packets on the channel and what they did is they removed the support for transmitting the packets in monitor mode Now if you are doing whips if you see a threat you need to transmit a dioth or some other prevention packet, right? Or there are some probing techniques that are required on the wireless side to be done to detect all threats So that's kind of uh, that change of behavior kind of uh, was a uh, little unexpected and then the 11 AC driver does not allow raw packet injection. I'm talking about Atheros, right? Now, what that means is that actually in WIPs, we need the ability to format the packets at application layer and then send them out to the radio without any underlying layers modifying it, right? Because th that's how we play the WIPs tricks. That's how you're going to 
trick the attacker. Uh, and then uh, that that they made very difficult in 11 AC. So kind of general, uh, you know, opinion form that it is not possible to, you know, implement full whips on Ethros radios. Well, it's difficult, but it's not impossible. So what we did is actually studied whole driver code, and then we implemented these custom modes, right? Custom modes of our own to get those things working. So uh, end of the story is that despite all those hurdles, you know, full airtight with feature set is ported onto C75 access point. So that's why I get, you know, even higher kick out of it. Now, as we were doing kind of uh, migration from 11N to 11AC, we are also being cognizant of what will be required of WIPs in the IoT world, okay? So all the buzzwords aside, you know, we have identified some fundamental issues that we think are going to be very important in the IoT world. <laughs> and the first one is the system scalability because with IoT, you are going to see a lot of devices, right, that need to be monitored, that are going to put stress on the sensor that is monitoring, as well as all these data will be processed and stored in a cloud server, so on both ends. And then we have, the, in kind of cognizance of that, we have raised now the monitoring capacity of each sensor or an AP with a background scanning to 2,000 active devices, okay? So that's, that's pretty big actually. And inactive devices don't really matter. They can be any number. Uh, second thing is operation scalability. And that's where we talk about alert flare avoidance. We talk about zero day detection. What that means is ability to address the threats whose signatures are not known today. For example, the tools that will be launched on Friday in DEF CON, right? We don't know their signatures. Is your system equipped to still protect you from them? That's called zero day avoidance, right? Zero day protection. And that's where you know, signature based systems are no good. And then of course, human intervention has to be minimal. And that basically naturally follows from this foundation of this protection oriented security paradigm. So you can check out my presentation at wireless field six where I have described this in very great detail what it means, right? So that kind of uh, naturally provides huge dividends for us in the IoT world. Uh, finally, a couple of these two things, uh, these two last things, uh, device diversity. So what happens is with increasing device diversity, you are going to see some nuanced implementations. I'll give some examples. Simple periodic sending of DAUTH packets does not prevent connections of all devices, it, you know, because of the driver behaviors or the radio behaviors. So what the system does, it, uh, it takes a feedback on whether it is working or not. And it's going to adjust the parameters of the auth or a type of prevention so that finally you can actually block that connection. Okay, that's an example. I have another example. You can check out this blog. Uh, I have written two years ago on some peculiar behavior of Nintendo chat devices on Wi-Fi. It looks like ad hoc, but not really ad hoc. And preventing it is very difficult. The, the, it's two year old, but the point I want to make is making IoT whips is an evolutionary process, you know, which has to have several years of foundation. You are not saying today that I'm going to take a quick right turn or a left turn because there's IoT next year. That's not how it's going to work. So that, that's the point. Uh, the blog is two years old, but you know, uh, you can check it out. And despite all that, there will still be some new attack vectors. So I'm not denying that, right? And the research and the new discovery will come out and they will have to be addressed on a case by case basis. So this is today our vision for IoT, for Wi-Fi, right, in terms of scalability and depth of detection and prevention. And as, as the time goes on, you know, we'll see how it evolves in a certain direction. So basically that's all I have and let me know if you have any questions. How quickly are you uh, issuing new WIP signatures and things to your to your customers? No, but I take pride in saying that typically never. See, because the whole idea of this is to get away from signatures. Okay, if if you you know the gra uh, the the prevention grid I showed you, the idea is to block those threats at a foundation level, irrespective of which device they are coming from, because if you start chasing the sources of those problems, you get into a signature deadlock and then you have to issue signature. So some, some customers say, oh, the, that system gives uh, signatures every two weeks. I said, so sorry. I feel so sorry for you. Uh, come back to me after six months 
and tell me how you feel about it. I say, we don't require signatures. So that's that's really the fundamental difference. Mm -hmm. Kind of taking along with what Richard said, um, I probably see a new IoT device almost every day. It's probably not that the case, but it seems that way. Do you all have like an IoT team that's looking at the profiles of the signatures, or I mean, I mean, do you, do you scour the web every day and just find, hey, here's a new one, let's put it in our. Profile. So we have an R and D team which looks at that, but we get a lot of feedback from deployments because we have so many deployments, okay. and not for signatures, but. Uh -huh. It's for if there is a peculiar behavior that is a, a protocol behavior because of which detection of a connection is not possible. And then you see it. Or it's not responding to prevention, okay. right? So we get a lot of that feedback, especially from security sensitive organizations. And so two sources, our own R&D and the field feedback. Okay. Great. Great. Yes. Uh, also to follow up on Richard's question. So just rephrasing his signature question, how often do you come up with updated heuristics for your customers to adapt to those kind of things? So updated heuristics will be every six months, pretty, typically, because as I said, it's pretty zero day resistant. You know, the new pineapple that will be launched two days from now, I don't know what it is. So I can't comment today, but when it happened with Cisco skyjacking, I knew that the day it was discovered, the system was protecting it, right? So that's really, but if it is critical, if it is false outside the scope, it will be pretty fast uh, kind of patch release. Thanks.